starts before we get in there. Um, we have a, a, about a half a dozen correspondents in Europe, including a bureau in London, so they start getting things going right away. Um, I'm usually up at 5 o'clock sort of going through what, what, what they're doing um, and also getting the first posts of the day ready for something we call first take, which is um, a, a window into what we do every day as, as we're doing it uh, on, the, on the homepage of thedeal.com for, for subscribers. Um, so that's, that's the first thing that gets going. That's the first way we sort of we interact with, with, with readers. Um, as we're, we're putting that together, we're also gathering um, whatever news we have either from late the night before or what's come in from overseas early that day to put into the update edition of the PDF. It's called an update edition because it comes out around noontime, New York time, um, as an update to the main edition, which is what we put together throughout the day, um, which is the, that's, it's what used to be the only thing that we did or one of the few things that we did, the Daily Deal. It's still called the Daily Deal. Um, that's where most of the news ends up. Uh, most of the news that, that our, our domestic reporters produce, anyway, ends up there. Um, and it goes out throughout the day, um, continuously, onto the deal pipeline, which is the, our online, our main online product. Um, it's everything that, that we do is, is posted there. Uh, if you wanted to see that, you could see it in reverse chronological order. It goes throughout the day, keeps just spinning around. Um, also, uh, first take continues to be updated throughout the day, again, as a way to let readers know what we're doing um, and to uh, have, give us an outlet for our markets coverage. We, something we've just we've recently started last year. We hired a markets editor whose job it is, is to pay attention to the equities markets and mainly the credit markets. Um, she and uh, another even more recently hired reporter um, are charged with uh, keeping us very up to date um, with, with what's going on. The idea being uh, that we could we could attract we could produce information useful to traders. Um, not trade T R A D E R S <laughs> not traders. Um, <laughs> uh, also, it, but also as a way to to highlight our best stuff. That's where you see really what what we are most proud of. Um, our exclusives, um, our uh, breaking news that we have that nobody else has, uh, our bringing our expertise to bear on what's happening in the markets. Um, that first take is, is where all that happens. This is the, 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 the last sort of daily product that goes out at the end of the day uh, is ahead of the news. That again is a way to highlight some of our best stuff. Our, our, uh, it's, it's called ahead of the news for a reason in that it's, it's stuff that you either can't get anywhere else um, or is uh, forward looking. Um, it's designed not to be what happened yesterday, but to be what's going to happen tomorrow, what you can expect to happen tomorrow, the next day, the next week, the next month. That's ahead of the news. And then at, at the same time, focusing on closing <coughs> the main edition, which is shipped, uh, which we finished at the end of the day, and which is shipped at around 3 o'clock New York time, 3 o'clock in the morning, New York time the following day, and then it starts all over again. The other thing to stress, and probably every organization you talk to does the same is uh, in our case we do have fairly early deadlines so it will do us no good whatsoever if someone gets back to us at five o'clock in the afternoon and you expect something to, to, to be translated that day so the earlier in the day uh, the better uh, and, and, and that's I think an absolute for right for obviously if something breaks after the market closes that's a different case. But uh, for the daily flow, uh, the, the earlier in, in the morning, really, the better. As a reporter, I, I usually like to get a daily story idea, say, before 11 o'clock. I can work on that till say, 3.30 or so. If nothing comes in, then I'm free to pursue more of a feature story. So the, uh, the rhythm of the weekly, or biweekly, rather, and the daily works quite well in terms of dividing the time of the reporters, I think. We have a future well, which has longer stories, longer takes on, um, you know, whether it's deals in the news, sectors in the news, 
some of the best features are, you know, we're, we're, keep in mind we're sharing the same newsroom as people who put out all the daily copy. So when this works really well, you know, if you have a reporter who's covering a sector and a bunch of deals, at some point they say, you know, I've noticed this really interesting trend in this sector. Or this one deal that I've been covering for months is really pretty fascinating and I'm going to write a longer piece, you know, just taking it apart. Um, or I've just noticed, you know, a very, you know, just take a broader topic. You know, we've just had a private equity issue. Matt Miller did a piece on private equity in the emerging markets. We had another piece on private equity in Paris. So we'll just try to, you know, give a broader view of what's, you know, of what's going on, you know, with less of a news focus, more of, you know, analytical, um, long form journalism view. All of our reporters and editors are listed on the website. I mean, you can find out who covers what there, um, and it's best. It's it's usually best directed, um, probably to the reporter, it's him, him or herself. Um, editors generally have a little bit too much to do, we, and it, we're not a place that 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 is run from top down. We don't do a lot of assigning. Editors don't assign a lot of stories. We we depend on reporters to come up with them themselves. Um, so. Really, that's that's the way to start as the reporters because they'll go they'll go to the editors and say I've got this and, and, and let's work on it. We know that you folks like to give your big scoops to the uh, Wall Street Journal and the New York Times and stuff <laughs> like that. But when you're going back to a story, there are a lot of new developments be between the time a deal is announced and it closes, and we're probably your best outlet for that. So don't hesitate to call with something that you think might be newsworthy that nobody else might be interested in. Richard just described us as close to the core strategy, tactics, I think, of what we do almost every day as anything else, which is we like to break things. We'd love to get the breaking news, the scoop, but we'd also like to try to cover these things in, in a much deeper fashion than anybody else will. So, you know, if you have, I mean, and we get a lot of cooperation on names, uh, but we're always happy to get names of people who worked on deals whether it's the bankers and the lawyers or whether it's the accountants and the PR folks. I mean, we'll, we'll take them all and, and we'll take them into the process. We talk to regulators and we have a bureau in Washington that does talk to regulators, particularly on the antitrust side and FCC. Uh, we'd always like to talk to more. <laughs> I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, uh, is there anything we're, we're not getting that we, you know, it's, it's always more, it's always yeah, the, Anybody who knows something. Yeah, the financing stuff. I mean, we, we, we did start, um, we've covered sort of leveraged finance for a while, but we've begun to, to dig deeper into the, into the terms of deals, the, the financing terms of deals. Some of that stuff is uh, extremely opaque and difficult to get at. It's often the, the sort of information on trading desks that, 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 that is shared between trading desks but not to the outside world. That's what we would like to get these days. I mean, if we could get that, if we could get that kind of sourcing, we would, you know, we'd be very happy. The byline articles is three kinds. I mean, there's three names. There's industry insight, there's judgment call, and there's soapbox. Soapbox sort of came out of the financial crisis, and it's supposed to be about the ongoing crisis. It's a little vague, and we put a lot of stuff in there. Uh, Judgment call uh, originally was mostly actually Jeff, you you're the one who started this. Law, right? tax, and accounting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We still try. We, we yeah, still we still try to do that. Still try to do so, that. and those tend to be on those topics. Uh, industry insight again originally was meant to be a sort of sector look at, uh, you know, uh, manufacturing or, or, or technology or something like that. It, it has it has morphed a little bit and changed, but it but there should be a more sort of uh, sectoral look at uh, deal making or regulation like that. Um, but Tom can, can explain that to you, uh, and he can explain the sort of basic outlines of these things. We, we just don't want it to be, you know, we, we don't have footnotes, you know, the lawyers in particular tend to get, you know, lawyer-like. Lawyer uh, it, it's nice to have it in English, and uh, although not always. Um, so, you know, and, and that's really the guidelines. It's, 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 it has to be accessible to a sophisticated, everything in the magazine has to be accessible to a sophisticated deal audience. And the person that you should pitch by letters to is Tom Robbie. He's not here tonight, but he is in charge of that. And we are always looking for 
any kind of insight. You know, we don't want an advertisement for your firm, but we are looking for interesting topics about if somebody, if a lawyer or an accountant or a banker, really has some good advice about how to handle a certain sector or how to handle a certain deal, you know, deal craft or interested in deal craft. What made, um, you know, somebody worked on a specific deal and came up with a mechanism, whether it was, you know, how to finance it, what the um, breakup fees look like, any kind of new structure, we're always looking for stuff like that. And that could be in a byline cop, in a byline article. That could also be just something, you know, in the magazine, in Deal Diary, we would love to hear more about how did the deal come together and who came up with the idea to structure something in a certain way? Who came up with, um, you know, whether it's the breakup fee or the go shop or um, the, you know, the, the split between stock and cash? You know, there's, there's people putting together these deals and a lot of smaller deals sometimes in that respect are more interesting than the bigger deals that are just sort of a template that are done by two CEOs. But when you really get into more mid-market deals, there's a lot of interesting deal craft going on. And that, you know, we'd love to hear about stuff like that. Whether it, And that could be a byline article or just, you know, something that we'd like to get pitches about. <laughs>